tonight is going to be very special. Like they said in that sketch, we are going to have improv comedy, sketch comedy, and stand-up tonight. The trifecta! Yeah, that's how they win the Tony Awards. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, there's some music, too. There's music. And cinema. We're going to eat out this bitch. Yeah! Is everyone excited? Yeah! Woo! Well, let's get the ball rolling with your first stand-up act. Uh, he's a very funny man here from Columbia. Let's give it up for Micah God. Yeah, whatever they were reading on that sheet is actually just my set list, so I want to set the bar too high. I, uh, hey guys, how are y'all doing today? Oh, cool. I'm not an Auburn fan. Uh, this is my last shirt and my last pair of pants, so that's how today shaped up. So right now is actually where it starts to go up, because there's at least a couple giggles and I can live with that. I, uh, I was on, on my way over here, I had to, I had to park a couple blocks, and uh, there were all these hipsters in the way, and they, they were trying to peer pressure me, they were like, hey man, come on, nobody else is doing it. <laughs> I did it, I did it. I, uh, they, uh, they say you, uh, have you ever heard the phrase, you see with your eyes, not with your hands? It's pretty true unless you're blind, right? I, uh... <laughs> Any punchline that could come after that is not going to be that giggle, sir. So I'm just, I'm going to move on. You're a winner. You win tonight. I, um, I, I was wondering the other day, uh, would it be overtly offensive to tell a kid that was late to special ed class that he was tardy? <laughs> A groan? Okay. I heard at least one groan. And that is the goal with that kind of joke. My, uh, I, uh, I have a girlfriend. She's, uh, long, she's in Boston right now. She's going to school up there. Um, and let me tell you guys, long distance is hard. Um, a bush in the hand is worth two in Boston, is what I always say. Uh, <laughs> She wrote that joke, so if you're mad about feminism, look at her. I don't know. That was all her. She, um, recently she got, she got bit by her cat in her sleep. She rolled over on her cat, and he, he really gripped in there. She had to go to the hospital, and they wanted, they wanted the cat's address as though it were different from hers. <laughs> that was kind of weird, first of all, just for that reason alone, but... Why do you need to know where the cat lives? Like, is there going to be some sort of investigation? Is there a cat police force that I'm unaware of? I'm just imagining, like, the cat police showing up at our door. Uh, is there a Sam Johnson here? Yeah, he's wanted on four felony counts, possession of catnip, intent to distribute. We're going to need to have a few words with him. Cats. One time I, uh, and you ever have something happen when you're drunk and you don't really remember it and then people tell your friends about it without warning, like they never informed you of what you did and they just share it publicly before you have a chance to go, no man, don't, that doesn't need to be out there. I, uh, apparently, I learned third hand that one time when drunk I punched a cat in the face, uh, twice. Twi and I believe, I believe the phrase I uttered was, I bet I could punch that cat in the face again. <laughs> so, uh, you know, first time, shame on me. Uh, second time, you really got to put the onus on the cat at that point, I think. Uh, but things that happen like that, you really got to put your own spin on it, you know? If, now, now I try and beat people to the punch. I tell a story, but I change it around a little bit. I say, this one time when I was drunk, I was crushing some pussy. Twice in one night. People really let you slide when you're when you're just talking about you know strange sex. It's different. I don't know. I um, I think it's strange that in a country with our history that we have a a black rapper named Two Chains. Uh, it's kind of like having a Jewish band named Pyramids, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe that's just me, I don't know. I, uh, I'm super poor. Um, which is, which is kind of nice sometimes, uh, but then you have some serious reality checks. I was listening to the radio the other day, and this ad came on, and it was like, you can vacation in Missouri for $99. And I thought, wow, I am too poor to vacation in Missouri. <laughs> That's what I like to call rock bottom. You can't make it in Missouri, you can't make it anywhere, guys. I, um... I was thinking that I think it would be interesting if there were elitist homeless people. That would be an interesting concept. Like maybe like homeless guys with shoes look down on barefoot homeless guys. And if elitism could exist in that in that sort of subset of people, maybe it can exist anywhere. And I realize this is the truth. My good friend Jen Snyder once taught me there's a term called the gold star lesbian. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a gold star lesbian is, that is a lesbian who has never even been with a man not once. And I was like, really? As a group of persecuted individuals, you had to divide yourselves. <laughs> How did you even come to that? Like, is there like, there were a bunch of lesbians standing around? Oh yeah? Well, I've never even touched a dick. <laughs> yeah? I've never even seen a dick. <laughs> What's a dick? <laughs> I just wrote that one down as homeless lesbians. I, uh, I, uh, I stayed at a hotel recently, I had to go out of town, and we stayed in this hotel, and it was, it was like one of those like close to the airport hotels, it was like, it was real, it was ghetto, it was like this real, and, and it was so ghetto, they actually had turned down for what service? Uh, it was good, it was good, I liked it, I enjoyed it. I, um, I had to get here on the highway. I was driving, this truck flies past me. I mean, I was going 80, so he must have been going 100. And he, in the back of the truck, there was a wheelchair, and it had a handicapped license plate. And all I could think to myself was, this guy didn't learn the first time. <laughs> my, um, found out recently that my brother used to cut himself. This is tragic. Um, he doesn't anymore. Uh, cause he died. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not, it wasn't from cutting, he was hit by a truck carrying razor blades. So, terribly ironic. I, um, that's, that's probably my darkest joke, so we probably, we'll be alright from here, probably. I, uh, Christmas is coming up, um, and I love Christmas, my favorite season of the year. Um, and I think we have a big problem is that we try to envision um, our sort of fictional father figures as like different races, like a lot of people are like, no, nah, Santa's white. And other people are like, no, Santa's black. And I think, I think the best Santa would be Asian. I think Santa, I think that would be really great because you wouldn't get presents unless you studied hard all year. Is that a much better way to do things? I, uh, I don't remember the punchline to that joke. Um, so, just get A's, guys. Uh, maybe learn a stringed instrument. That way you can avoid cold at the end of the year. I, um, I love the, uh, my, my, one of my favorite things, I have to wait four years for it, but I love the Olympics. I love the Olympics. And I, I wish that we could get enough people together to make a regular people Olympics. The, the average Joe-a-thon, or whatever you want to call it. And, and you wouldn't get to volunteer. It's not how it works. It works like jury duty. You just get a letter in the mail. Hey, you're performing the 400 meter relay. Uh, get your tennis shoes. Get a plane ticket. We're not paying. Get a plane ticket. Come to Greece. We're gonna need you to. Uh, we're gonna need you to perform. All right. America's counting on you. We want that gold medal. You know, America might have a chance for the average Joe Olympics. We might have a chance if the uh, sport was like watching the most consecutive hours of television. Maybe. Uh, I think I could take at least silver. My parents would be proud of silver. I think. I can vacation in Missouri, so I think they'd be proud of a silver medal. 
I, uh, and, and the Olympics are kind of strange in that a lot of the events are just weird. Like the shot put. You know, the, a lot of the events are traditional. They, they came from ancient Greece, like javelin tossing. You know, that's your spear, war, wrestling. Where did the shot put come in? Was that like... That's the old school cannon, I guess. You just get a big guy. I feel like... I feel like one guy was just making up all the Olympic events, and he had like a, like a brother that wanted to be a part of it, but he was like, no, I don't. And his mom was like, you let Joe, John. I said Joe, and then I felt bad because he's here. It's, I'm kidding, Joe. I love you. Let, give him, let him make a thing. And he was like, look what I can do. <laughs> that was real good, buddy. We'll put that one right in there. You can be our first contestant. All right, now that's good. All right, I get it. I get it. I love. Um, I'm sure you guys know all about Ebola. What's going on? They uh, there was an announcement a couple weeks back, and uh, the uh, who the World World Health Organization said, and I quote: Ebola is spreading too fast. Isn't any rate of speed for Ebola transmission a little too fast? <laughs> That's like saying, these bullets are going way too fast. They are hitting people, they are killing them. I don't like it. Not a fan. Not a fan of all the murder. I, uh, let's see. Uh, Americans hate soccer. I think we can all agree that that seems to be a general consensus. Uh, and I know this, I know this because I watched the Women's World Cup. I was the one. That was me. Uh, and I can tell that nobody cared because... It looked like it was in someone's backyard. Like there was like, you know that play school hoop? It was like in half on the ground. I got you, buddy. Uh, uh, and, and you know, and, and I know Americans don't care about soccer because uh, the only thing Americans know about women's soccer is that one time a chick took her shirt off. <laughs> if, you, if, if someone just sent me a ham, that's, it was actually Brandy Chastain. That's how little of a shit we give about women's soccer. We don't remember the lady who took her shirt off. It's kind of impressive if you think about it. Uh, I'm just going to end with two last things. Uh, I, uh, you know, like I said, my girlfriend, she was born and raised here in Columbia, and I think it's sad that here in Columbia, we don't really have like a cool nickname to give our women. Like, in Georgia, you could be a Georgia peach, you know? In the Southwest, she's a desert rose. The only thing Columbia produces is regret. <laughs> uh, like dating my girlfriend. I'm kidding, I love her. She's great. She is great. She's awesome. Um, we developed this weird system. Uh, when it comes to sex, you guys, you, you gotta figure out. You gotta meet in the middle. You gotta find a way to compromise. And one of the things we did um, is she. She said that she would, she would be willing to swallow if she could get chocolate immediately afterwards. And I thought, isn't that a little bit ridiculous, babe? Two snacks after sex? Oh. My name is Mike Goss. Y'all have a great night. Jimmy, 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 there, there's no guy in your closet. It's going to be okay. You just had a dream. You just had a bad dream. You'll be fine, sweetheart. There's, there's no one there. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. There's nothing to be scared of inside this home right now. The only That's, thing you have to be scared of is uh, your father's and my relationship. I mean, let's not get into that right now. Uh, you want to get into it right now? It's very late. Okay. Uh, everything is okay. There's nothing in this house to be afraid of. Now, outside the house, there it's filled with traps and terrible things. But as long as you stay inside this house, you're going to be fine. Yes, yeah, sweetheart, you're, you're a white man. You have nothing to worry about. No, it's called privilege. You're going to get used to it. It's so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, no 
worries. So there's there's no guy in my closet? There's no guy in your closet. There, there is a bunch of guys in the Middle East who are causing a lot of trouble and they really want to kill all of us. That's that's true, sweetheart. Yeah. yeah that's Thanks. unfortunately true. Um, and also there's uh, razor blades in your candy coming up for Halloween. <laughs> Why? Yeah. That's coming back around. That's it's, a that's a real thing. That's a thing. We read yeah. it in the neighborhood newspaper, it's a yeah. real thing. Jesus! Fox News <laughs> told me so it's true. Also, if anyone's coughing on the school bus, they probably have Ebola. Yeah. <laughs> What? It's it's gonna happen to you, sweetheart. But just uh, just let it ride. Even even with the whole white privilege thing, I can still get a bowl. You can yeah. still oh, get definitely. a bowl. Up. You can definitely that. It'll start bleeding out of your ears and your eyes and your your poop poop and your pee pee. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to bleed out of my pee pee. Well, at least your pee pee still works, <laughs> unlike your father's. Look. Okay. Maybe it works with your yoga instructor, since you seem to be so familiar with her. I told you, I'm a very spiritual person, uh -huh. yeah. and I channel right. my prana in the way sure. that I need to go, yeah. okay? Okay. Right. Yeah. Maybe you should channel some prana down there. Look, uh, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is a very scary man. He sounds like a Bond villain. Isn't he great? Yeah, Martha Stewart's scary too. Sweetheart. She's on the loose. Yeah, she's on the loose. Gotta be, gotta yeah. be out for that. Yeah, Martha Stewart scares me. She she comes on and scares me after the Sesame Street. Yeah, she's an evil white woman. Yeah. There's nobody regulating our stock market right now. High speed trade is going rampant. Yeah, there's basically no future right now. Um, but it's okay. You are safe in here. Yeah, you would be even safer if your father wasn't allergic to dogs. I told you I cannot control my genetics. It's called an allergy pill, sweetheart. You know how Take I feel pill, about the fine. pharmaceutical industry. They are a blood-sucking vampire that is destroying our society, okay? Would you rather have your son die from Ebola or something else because a dog can't protect him because you have your damn allergies? Dad, why don't you let me die because you're allergies? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. Your father is an evil, evil man who has lots of allergies. You know, marriage is scary. Marriage is very scary. Sometimes I would look at your wife, uh, your mother, my wife, and your mother. And Can you I remember that I am your wife? That's how much you love me. Okay, cram it, Carol. It's been ten years. <laughs> ten years I've been dealing with this, and we haven't gotten anywhere. Sometimes I look at your mother, way. and I don't even know if I'm in love with her. If I'm just in love with an idea of her that no, I still no, have. No, no, you're in love with the yoga instructor. Namaste. Amy understands me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, 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 just, uh, just a recap. Uh, <laughs> Ebola. Yeah, it's gonna get seventy percent chance. Yeah, it's seventy percent that high, really? Yeah, yeah if you get it, it's really high. Yeah. You learned that from your mother. He did learn that from me. Yes, he did. So, e Ebola. Yeah. Uh, guys in the Middle East who are who are gonna kill me? They're gonna kill you. <laughs> and Martha Stewart. And Martha Stewart. You guys, but, but my closet is clear. It's white There's nobody. Closet is fine. There's yeah. nothing in sure. sure. Absolutely. It might sure. be Tom Cruise, but you'll you'll be fine. You know what? At this point, I, I would prefer a guy in my closet over uh, <coughs> hanging out with you two anymore. So uh, I got want to go back to bed. Okay. Well, uh, can we, we say we uh, we get the twin beds? Yes, uh, separate rooms because that's where I feel safe. All right, let's. You uh, have a good night. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh,
and it is time for the improv portion of the night. Uh, we are going to bring a monologist on stage, and then our improv group that goes by the name of Chuckle Sandwich will uh, perform whatever scene is uh, created by yeah. that story. We're going to take inspiration from the story. We have not heard it. We have given them a prompt. Uh, the word fall, which I believe is the season we are now officially in. That's right, Kurt. All right. Just here for support. Oh, awesome. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and welcome up our first monologist. You know how my short-term memory is, Patrick. That's right, our first monologist. He goes by the name of Adam Cook. Let's bring up Mr. Adam Cook. Give him a welcome, warm round of applause. Would you like to stand, Adam? Or you would? No. I don't want to stand. I want to be free. So I didn't even know they were going to act this out. This makes me feel better because now I can do like whatever and I'll look brilliant. Hopefully. All right. So it's the fall, so I figured I could take a little bit of a, uh, a liberty with it. So I want to tell you about the time I almost killed Santa. Okay? Everybody ready? So it was a lovely day in my early 20s, right? And I, being in my 20s, decided I was going to get really hammered. And you're like, oh, I got work tomorrow, but I'm 22. I can handle it. And so I go out, I get really wasted, and I had to go to my Christmas job at Toys R Us, which is like the most horrible place to have a hangover. Is Toys R Us because you're surrounded by very loud, screaming kids. And so I love kids, but when I'm like got a headache, I don't really care whether or not you want the fire truck, you know. And so what happens is I'm driving home, and the light. Is like shining in my eyes, the sun's setting right in front of me, and I ran a red light by accident, and I T-boned this guy. And he was in a Santa costume. Right? So I'm in Lexington, South Carolina. Anybody here from Lexington, South Carolina? Woo! Woo! Then you might have seen this because once Santa was by the side of the road, bleeding out of his head. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, oh yeah, this could only happen to me. Like, because kids are making their parents stop the car and go, Santa, are you alright? And they're thinking like, God, this could only happen to me, man. Like, you know, not only is my insurance going to go up, but I almost killed Santa. Call back. <laughs> All right. The other story, like I said, I can take liberties with the definition of fall. And I will. I'm going to take liberties, man. This one time, oh, he loves it. Come on, everybody, join with him. So anyway, like, so we go to, like, I'm at work, and, like, you know, it was a regular day in the fall at Radio Shack. I work at Radio Shack. I'm in retail. And we had to dismantle these cabinets, and we let the screw out. It was hanging, like, six feet. Like, it was, like, sticking six feet up. Uh, not six feet. Six inches. Six feet would be impressive. But, like, six inches off the ground, and my boss has a very heavy tread. Let's just put it that way. So he steps on the screw, and this goes right up his, you know, his foot. And I thought like Sam Kennison was doing like stand up like and it was like right here I'm walking out of the room here ah 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 and I'm, like I walk in I don't know what happened and he pulls off his you know shoe and a sock and the blood just starts going like spurting out like this is not something you should see in retail you know it's like your boss bleeding out onto the floor and what made it really hilarious was a guy came in for a job interview that day right and so there's this guy for a job interview and he's just sitting there like. And we never heard from that guy ever again. I think he decided, fuck it, I'm going to go work at McDonald's. What was really great about it, too, is like what made it awesome uh, for me was just like when I saw the look in my manager's face. That's when I knew we failed the inspection. Because he came in for inspection. My district manager wounded himself to the point where he had to go to the hospital and get the tetanus shot. So I think everybody here would agree. That's an F. You failed that one. So that was my best day at work. I should have titled it that. That was my best day at work. Like, no matter what happened, I would just think about that and I would just smile. Like, it was the best day ever. All right, have a great night. All right, team, I need everybody in here. Everybody in here? As we all know, uh, it is fall. And uh, Radio Shack needs to get our fall sale going. I want some ideas for the fall sale this year, okay? Jenkins. Uh, how about Christmas? Yeah, I like that. Uh, uh, Christmas is fall? I feel like that's taking a very liberal idea of what fall is. What if we yeah. just mix both of them together so it's like, it's a killer Christmas. Yeah. 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 Scary Christmas. Yeah. Scary Christmas. Yeah. Scary, a scary yeah. thankful Christmas. Oh, yeah. 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 Can we go home? Early today. If we get this idea, 
If we get this nailed, we can all go home early. We can oh, only sell The Nightmare Before Christmas, since it's a DVD that people often confuse of being rather uh, Halloween or Christmas. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it just fits our whole, uh, you know, genre. I watch it on 4th of July. It's just like, it feels like it's neither, so I'm going to make it's it a different thing. It's a good Pumpkin movie. lattes! Lattes? Pumpkin lattes! Peppermint pumpkin lattes. Peppermint pumpkin lattes! Yeah. How do we squeeze out a couple cell phones in this? Isn't that what we sell now? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, how about remote control leaves? That's that's oh, like all. Remote control, like, like we we, we so got like, all those helicopters. Like they're a drone. It's yeah, just, yeah. just a control like ball. That. Yeah. It's very seasonal. <laughs> That, that idea. Does it get back up and then fall again, or is it just one use? use? I haven't worked it out. I haven't figured it out. I need to go early. I have a doctor's appointment. In the fall? Yeah. I feel like I mean, you said that three more streets. I, you know, no. I, I, I have like three kids I gotta take to the doctor like right now. Like, I get this meeting is important and stuff, but like... Maybe I gotta we can it. make it a doctor's office. That seems to be bringing business. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I mean, we've been, we've been complaining about Obamacare this whole time. We might as well just embrace it, right? Yeah. The doctor's office that sells pumpkin lattes. And, and remote leaks. I remote like leaks. this idea! <laughs> oh man, I had a messed up day. You too? Yeah. I think there's a bunch of crazy people out there. Is that what's going on? Yeah. I was driving on the interstate, three leprechauns went in front of my SUV. I hit two of them, the other one jumped on top of my SUV, crawled through the sunroof, kicked me out of my car! That sounds just like those guys. What happened? <laughs> just like those guys. <laughs> I was assaulted by leprechauns as well! No way! They're everywhere! Where were they? On the other highway, going the other way! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were northbound? Maybe they were just like in the middle and we were <laughs> just crossing and they happened to be like the, the spot. You think they're hiding something? Maybe they're just trying that to defend it. Maybe the gold is underneath the highway. I don't know. Alright, so I heard this year the gold's going to be underneath the highway. No one will ever expect that. Everybody's tired of old Jimmy Hoffa jokes. Nobody's digging up highways anymore. How do you feel about jumping in front of a car or two? Or the old insurance racket. Yeah, well, I, that's the only way we're going to get the gold. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it because I'm so low to the ground that it would possibly just throw me if it's a good impact. If it's not, I could just get mounted and come in through the sunroof. <laughs> I don't want to seem unexcited, but what kind of health insurance do you get? <laughs> Listen, I know you're into the leprechaun thing, but you just need to find some gold, right? Like, I need to buy things for Christmas. It's time to tick in. You need to really, really make this happen. This gold business thing, this leprechaun thing that you got going on, it needs to happen ASAP. My parents were right. Mixed relationships never work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Toria. Do you know what Johnny got me this year for Christmas? What did Johnny get you for Oh Christmas? my god. Johnny got me some diamond earrings. He did? He did. He got me some diamond earrings. Did. What did Tony get you? He got me... Got me Martha Stewart cookbook. Oh, well, you know, I mean, you guys haven't She's really been devil. together that long, so it's not like, you know. That I mean, long? We've been together three months, Sylvia. Three months. It's time for the diamonds on my neck, you know what I'm saying? Look, I got the diamonds on my earring this year. I got the diamonds on my ring next year. Cross your fingers. This year is going to be my year. I promise you, I promise you, I don't want to work at this nail salon no more. Because you have a brother? You know, I think he does have a brother. I think he, oh my god, we would be so cute as Oh my god, we would! Oh my god, we could have matching twinsy weddings. Twinsy weddings, oh my god. Oh, and Martha oh Stewart, we could have Martha Stewart come in. We could have Martha Stewart. <laughs> This is the exact spot that I hit those two leprechauns. I don't understand why I haven't found the gold yet. Me too, just a different time of day going the opposite direction. Because I swear to God, if I don't get Ginny that diamond ring, she is going to be so pissed. And no, I know. She told me the other day she was hitting at some stuff. 
person with a little rock on her toe. Yeah. How, how is she hinting? I would die to get a uh, ring on my finger. If he doesn't give me a ring by the next two weeks, he's on the streets. Because that's how she worded it to me. It. Yeah. Except it was much more polite, like, oh, I wouldn't have stubbed my toe if it was heavier. <laughs> You nailed that impression. I got a little bit attracted to you there for a second. <laughs> What's it going to be my turn to be? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so welcome to the Radio Shack. We now sell diamonds. We now sell Martha Stewart cookbooks. We now sell DVDs of Tim Burton movies, all holiday themed. This is the new Radio Shack. This is who we are now. Deal with it. Okay, I was wondering if you had any of those leaves that uh, can fall and then I can fly on? Andrew, you know you I've got just, a leaf. I've just been testing it. Okay. I've just been testing it. The customer I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to hand you the controls, okay? Okay. All right, you got to hold it up really high to start with. Uh-huh. You guys, there's an axe still inside. There's lots of leprechauns. They're all dead. Free gold! <laughs> All our stock is safe! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want everyone to put your hands together, but not like just right now. I want you to hold them out, and then I want you to put them together at a rapid speed so that it makes an audible noise. And give some love to Mr. Quentin Wilde. Oh, how are you tonight? Hope everyone's having a fun time here at the TAPS Art Center. Or as I like to call it, that place where homeless people accost me outside. Oh, thank you all for coming out tonight. As they said, my name is Quentin Wilde. Uh, I'm just getting back from vacation. Not so long ago, I went on a cruise to this resort. And like, we get to the resort and they have all these activities you can do. And one of the activities was swim with dolphins. And I hear this, and I'm excited as fuck, because, like, I love dolphins. And, like, I used to watch that show Flipper as a kid. You know, everybody remembers Flipper, you know. Flipper, Flipper, king of the ocean. You, you know the show. And so, like, I, I sign up for it, and, like, I go there, and it's a group of us. We're in the pool with the, you know, instructor, and he's asking everybody if anybody had any questions after he explained the rules. And one chick's like, I heard it's that... Dolphins like molest people? And we all started laughing, of course, because like in our heads, this is like the craziest shit we ever heard in our life. And then the instructor's like, well, yes, there have been cases of dolphins molesting people, but let me assure you, it's when that does happen, it's only dolphin on males. And it's it's in a way to assort their dominance. And so now my thoughts of swimming with dolphins have gone from flipper and more to like Oz. Because the last thing I want to happen on my vacation is to be made a dolphin's bitch and to be made to sleep on the bottom bunk or something. So I'm thinking in my head, like, why well, get in the water? Like, should I just like punch the first dolphin I see to like, like assert my dominance? Like, are we just going straight off of prison rules and shit? What, what's going on here, folks? I need, I need you to tell me. You can't just tell me, oh yeah, dolphins molest dudes. Just put them, yo, put them in chat. So that, yeah, no, no, that's not cool. You just don't leave that shit. Oh. So I went to rehab too, which is like another awesome small vacation. <laughs> Folks, if you've never gone to rehab, please, please do. Make sure you go to like one of those fancy rich rehabs. Don't go to one of those like, if it's held at a rec center, that's not the rehab you want to go to. Alright? You need to get on a plane and go to rehab, alright? If you can drive to your rehab center, it's not going it, to, it, come on. And so like, I went to rehab. And they make us do group, and everybody sits in a circle, you know, everybody tells their stories, and like, the guy before me, he's like, yeah, I was a high-ranking officer in the military, and I got hooked on crystal meth, and the next thing I know, I left my wife, I, I started dating this 19-year-old who I also got hooked on crystal meth, and the next thing I know, I'm, 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 I'm living in a hotel room, Pimping out the 19-year-old who's pregnant with my child, and 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 of course I get arrested. My 
My family doesn't talk to me anymore. My kids refuse to talk to me. My friends are all gone. My girlfriend, you know, her family moved her away. She's living somewhere I don't even know. And the kid was born, but because she did crystal meth with the kid, the kid was born with, you know, all kind of birth defects. And crystal meth just really destroyed my life. He gets done with his story, and they come to me, and they're like, so, uh, Quinn, you want to tell us a little bit about why you're here? I just look up, and I'm like, oh, uh, my name's Quinn, and I like to party? <laughs> like, how the fuck am I going to beat that? No, no. I got caught in a car with a little bit of weed, coke, and a passed out white girl in the backseat. Like, come on. Man. But considering I got caught with a pass out white girl in the backseat of my car in Columbia, South Carolina, rehab was like really the best thing that could have happened to me. There was like a whole list of fucked up shit that could have happened to me instead. So, you know what? I'm going to take that as a win. I had another guy in rehab. He was telling his whole sad story. And he's like, yeah, I, I started doing drugs and. I, I quit my job and I, I started prostituting myself, again, like uh, doing sexual favors for truckers and anybody else. And, and then my moment of clarity came around when I, I stole my niece's bike to sell for truck money. And I'm thinking in my head, that was your moment of clarity? Stealing your niece's bike? Um, my moment of clarity would have been anywhere around the time I seriously considered sucking another man's dick, all right? Like, there is nothing I love in this world so much that I'm willing to put another man's penis in my mouth, all right? I wouldn't suck my own dick, and I love my dick, folks. I don't understand that. But it's people. Drugs affect people in different ways. I don't know. So as you all know, Halloween is coming up. I'm going to be completely honest, I don't really know that much about Halloween. My family were very religious, so I only celebrated Halloween like four times in my entire life. And for three of those Halloweens, I was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Had I known I wasn't going to get more Halloweens, I would have chosen other costumes. <laughs> but my foolish thinking was like, oh, that's what they play. I could be something else later. Fuck that shit. Three years in a row, Michelangelo. <laughs> My grandmother was so cheap, she made me wear the green parts after I outgrew them as night clothes. <laughs> Damn, but let that soak in for a fun. Just let it soak in, folks. Come on. But I love Halloween now that I'm an adult and I'm out on my own. My favorite part about Halloween, especially living in Columbia, is seeing all the racist ass outfits the college kids come up with. Oh, God, nothing brings joy to my life as a minority than seeing a rich, privileged white kid in blackface. I'm going to let you know right now. There's nothing. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, coming as Martin Luther King for a Halloween. That is genius, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, no, I totally get it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's funny, yeah. Oh, you're a class member. <laughs> funny. You're a clever one. Uh, I'm trying to decide what costume I'm going to be. I'm either going to be Iron Man or Slutty Iron Man. I'm not really sure yet. One of the two. Oh, I can't wait. The other day I was at work and a lady comes up to me and she's like, So, because you have a job where you deal with the public a lot and you're always touching money, are you afraid of Ebola? And I, I tell her, you know, of course not, you know, I, I'm very careful, you know, I'm always washing my hands and everything. And in my head, though, I'm thinking to myself, lady, as a black man, Ebola is just another thing on a very long list of shit trying to kill me, all right? <laughs> At the top of that list, there are cops, <laughs> middle-aged white men trying to stand their ground, <laughs> high blood pressure, <laughs> cancer, AIDS, rhinos, Side note, rhinos kill more people statistically in Africa than any other you know, creature. So statistically, I'm looking out for rhinos. Oh yeah, and other black guys. So you'll have to forgive me if I say, fuck Ebola, alright? If I can die and not go out of this world screaming in agonizing pain, I'm taking that as a win, alright folks? Fuck you. People always, you know, give me shit because they always... My white friends label me as the, quote, whitest black guy they know. Fuck you, right? 
I don't care if I'm the whitest black guy or the blackest black guy, guess what? I'm still black and it sucks. <laughs> uh, the other day I was at Family Dollar. I stopped there because I needed light bulbs. Light bulbs. I buy light bulbs and a bath mat. I am walking out of the door and I get to the door and the little sensor alarm goes off because the chick forgot to take the fucking sensor off the bath mats. Which, first off, who the fuck are stealing bath mats, folks, from the dollar store? <laughs> If someone wants to steal a bath mat from the dollar store, fuck it, you're more than welcome to have it, all right? Because obviously there's some shit going on you don't want to talk about. But as soon as the alarm goes off, I immediately go into black guy mode. I hear the alarm, my hands go up. <laughs> I walk back slowly towards the cashier, looking them in the eye. I'm not trying to steal these. It was accent, not my fat. There you go, there you go, please don't shoot me. This is shit I have to deal with as a black guy, all right? Another thing is uh, I always get you know shit from my friends because I date a lot of white girls and like I'm thinking to myself like I don't actually date that many white girls and then I thought about it and I do date a lot of white girls like there was so many white chicks coming in and out of my room you would thought I opened a Forever 21 all right guys it's like it was, and like. And like, I was talking to my friend about this, and she's like, well, when you think about it, you're like the perfect starter black guy for girls who want to like start interracial relationships. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And, I, and like, she said this, and like, it threw me for a loop, and, but I, you know, I started thinking over it, and she was 100% right. Like, I am not going to pick, you know, any girl up driving an 86 Caprice on 26 inch rims, painted in candy paint. I, I, uh, I have a regular, my name, for the love of God, Quentin. I am named, I shit you not, after a character off of Dark Shadows. <laughs> this is as non-threatening as it gets, folks. I grew up in Texas, and I got teased a lot, and I'm gonna let you know why I got teased. I'm just gonna give you a little, little backstory about me. I grew up in Texas as a black kid that didn't play football, and my hobbies included, as shit you know, the law team, tennis team, and golf team. Oh yeah, and my favorite club, Young Black Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well have painted a target on my back and said, come and get it. That was my life, folks. So yeah, fuck you, why is black got my ass? I'm the toughest black guy to survive this long. All right, people? Thank you all, you think great. I've been kept wild. Shouldn't have split up. God damn it! This is how this is how you die. This is how you die in, the, in these <coughs> situations. You, everybody, you know, cover more ground, and then you end up in a hallway, and then all of a sudden you're on the wall as an ornament of some kind. Just focus. Just focus. Everything's gonna be okay. There's absolutely nothing in the shadows. Everything's gonna be great. Meet me back up with everybody. We scouted this place out perfect. East wing of this house is great. Everything's gonna be. What the fuck? Whoa! Yeah, what the what the fuck? What the fuck? What the what the what? <laughs> this is my spot, dude. This is my territory. It's the 31st. It's not the 13th? No! <laughs> Check your eye calendar. You have an eye calendar. I just got here. Can I can I go? No, you no. stay. You stay. We have business to take care of. It's not personal. It's business. I'm tired of you stepping on my ground, man. Mine's clearly labeled. And you're wrongly labeled! And time-wise, are you sure it's not the 13th? Yes. <clears throat> I'm very sure. We have to figure out a way to settle this. Rock, paper, machete? <laughs> Some more? Rap out. <laughs> I mean, if you guys want, I could probably supply a chorus. <laughs> yo, yo, what's my snare? Uh. Uh. 
There's a reason this season we must be opposed Cause we both sure like killing and wearing dirty clothes We can take your style and mix it with my way Cause this year Halloween falls on a Friday You're not as scary as you were in November You're not that spooky, time for you to surrender Went a little nuts when you saw your sister's titties I died in a lake while some counselors got frisky Mama took some vengeance because of her temper Killing all camp counselors no matter race or gender You think it's over, here's where it begins They took her out, time for me to step in Crystal Lake and its camps, they are my royal castle I'm king on a throne and you're just an asshole Wielding a knife, you deal bits of pain I sling machetes, clefted bitches in twain To fight, to kill my prey, I will follow any place From deep down in hell, all the way up in space I'm not that humble, I do like to brag Have you ever killed a girl with another girl inside a bag? season, we must be your foes Cause we both sure like killing and wearing dirty clothes We can take your style and mix it with my way Cause this year Halloween falls on a Friday Michael Myers reppin' how to feel It's the great Illinois Go on and flash him up with lyrics It's that sweet Illinois You're as crazy as I am If you think that you can front with me I only kill in one spot, dude That's why I'm the G Like this one time? Well, I was just recently resurrected And I desperately needed a nap So I went home and inspected Just to find an entire family now Living in my crib so I decided to get all stabby and show them how I live. What's that, a machete? What are you gonna be murdering, thick brush? It's not the size of the tool that matters, dude. It's all about the thrust. We're not different. I want revenge. More than Putin wants Poland. Did Beyonce even notice when you killed Kelly Rowland? You're so dumb and slow. I am the opposite of the sword. I can move so fast sometimes it seems as though I teleport. I'm gonna scare you till you're shitless, but don't be so nervous. I'll have you more regular than Jamie Lee Curtis. And here's another thing that I really didn't want to pursue. See, you're a killer who's scared of water. I could escape you in a canoe. When I was six years old, I killed my sister, and I was straight clowning. What was it that you were doing? Oh, yeah. Help me! I'm drowning! <laughs> We can take your style and mix it with my way Cause this year Halloween falls on a Friday You know what's so bad? Yeah, I know That was pretty good Yeah, we're not Your different. rhymes cut pretty deep Yeah <laughs> And, I mean, I, I could... I can slash pretty well. I feel like there's no reason why we can't work together just one time Slashy, slashy Stabby, stabby That's good Uh, for our second improv performance of the night. Uh, this is a guy that does uh, comedy here around town. He also has a dog brother that's way more famous than he is. Let's give it up for J.D. Wall! Alright, yeah, so they gave you the word fall as well. Uh, and I'm the only person I've known that has fallen up stairs. I don't know if anybody else has done that, but it's pretty tragic. Uh, probably the greatest thing somebody can do is fall in love. Uh, the, the worst thing is fall out of love. That's a bitch. Um, okay, great. Let's see. You know, you go through all these bad dates just for like this one amazing date. And I'm going to tell you about a bad date I had. Um, there's this girl in my class. Uh, her name was Morgan. She's blonde hair. Uh, prettiest girl in the class. I eventually get the nerve up to talk to her, right? And we're walking out, and there's this big, like, USC offensive lineman talking to her. And I'm just like, fuck that. And I cut in and just start talking to her, and she was like, thank God you got that guy away from me. He was a prick. 
And he just, he's staring at me like he just hates my guts. And I just give him like this mean mug back, like do something. And he was like, mm, probably not. I was like, well, that's why Connor Shaw is running for his life. Um, so eventually we, we go on this date. Um, I take her to Roost Chris. And uh, halfway through the date, she looks at me and she goes, you don't think this is a date, do you? Like, oh no, of course not. I take all my friends to Roost Chris. Like, don't even worry about the tie, it's not even here. <laughs> then, uh, then the waiter comes up and he goes, how are we gonna do this bill? And I just call me, look at him and be like, uh, separate, we're just friends. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was the worst date I've ever been on in my life, and now you're going to see some kind of improv thing. Keep it going, Chris J.B. I never know who I'm looking for. You described yourself so well, though. I, well, thank you. I don't know how I'm. I spent a lot of time on that Tinder uh, information box. <laughs> a lot of time on it. I used a lot of emoticons. You notice? Know I, I saw. Mm -hmm. Did you get the reference uh, in the middle there? I, I don't know the. I don't Fisher, know. The, Fisherman Christmas tree weird Santa face. <laughs> I saw a carrot. It means I'm down for muff diving. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's why we set up so quickly. Also figured that's why you're playing hard to get. <laughs> because I put an um, orange brownie face teardrop. <laughs> teardrop. So uh, you're at, um, welcome to muff diving school. <laughs> I am, uh, you're our first student, so uh, welcome I'm, aboard. I'm excited. I'm, I'm so excited to have you here because I've never been anyone interested in, in, in muff diving. Manga style um, explanation point. Yeah, you do that a lot. <laughs> the emoticons, is that what your kids are calling it these days? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it, um, but it oh seems... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm really lonely. Aww. I don't have any... Right now, look, Jerry. Yep. You gotta have a way for the kids to communicate on these cell phones that they got in their pockets. Okay, let's right. uh, try. They, they have failed miserably at the human alphabet. Okay. So <laughs> now I'm thinking we just go to like a, some sort of a picture system. Kind of like a picture. They take a picture. They send them a the picture. No, no, they don't take a picture. Like they have little tiny pictures, and that those are supposed to represent some sort of word or idea. So, okay. like this is what I think. We start with smiley faces. Smiley faces. Pretty, pretty easy. Everybody then, loves a smiley. Face. And then we go to like I don't know smiley pile of poo. I mean, that, who doesn't love that? I mean, that, who doesn't want that on their phone? Like I get a text from my grandma, and she's like, "Grandpa's sick," and I'm like, "Boo, boo, boo, boo!" All right. Sounds like a window to me. Okay. Maybe, maybe we could try one that's just like a finger going like that. Um, privacy, Mr. Johnson. You know, I, sure. I'm, I'm, you know, it's unfortunate that I have to be the person bringing you here today. Um, but according to your profile, you said, you know, age is not an issue. Not an issue whatsoever. Okay. Um, that raised some red flags. You know, you are a registered sex offender. <laughs> so, could um, you maybe like clarify for us? Just, just so we're clear, you are on the record. Anything you say can and will be used against you um, in the court of law. That's, oh! Yeah. Well, I'm kind of excited that we got set up on this day, even though it's just friends. It's still cool that a website would like put up sex offenders like this. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's rough being a sex offender alone. Yeah, like, you don't get a lot of people to you know, go, go through this together. Um, when I'm on the street, most people recognize me as the uh, weird face on the emoticons with the mustache and the creepy eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm a person in here. 
And who cares if I prefer to live next to elementary schools? Sure, and my, my Facebook page is constantly being attacked by people said, check out this sex offender registry uh, profile. He lives next door to you. Keep on the look. I just, I just, I want kids off my lawn like every uh, guy. Oh, uh, hi, welcome to our restaurant. Oh, thanks for having us. Hey, do you think you can turn that TV on ESPN to Nick Jr.? Uh, I could probably get somebody to do that. That would be great. Thank uh, you can so I tell you about our specials tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, oh. Uh, we wow, have uh, right. some lovely new potatoes. What okay. kind of wine is this? Oh, that is a rather young vintage, but it's very Oh, nice. good! Yes. Very good! <laughs> We also have uh, the veal. It's so young, it's so tender, it's so just wonderful. Oh, it's a nice cream right. sauce. They, they, like they keep those in a cage and just feed them to keep yeah. them alive. Yeah. Do you have any microgreens? I hear those are like lettuce before they become lettuce. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> well aged cheese. Ugh. Well aged yeah. cheese. Yeah. Cheese? No, thanks. no thank you. No, no. Thank you. Uh, I found that when things get old, they start to smell bad. Yeah. Ah! Well, yeah, we try to keep things as fresh as we can here. Now, I noticed a lot of the food is cooked with truffle oil. Not gonna do it for me. Okay, what uh, what kind of oil would you prefer? Extra virgin. <laughs> okay, okay, we can definitely do that for you, sir. It's, awesome. it's not a problem, not a problem at all. Great. And we have one last thing, we have a roast of kid. That's a small lamb, oh. that, uh, young lamb that we kill, and then we roast in its own intestines. It's delicious. <laughs> You're surprised me enough that's a little bit too gruesome for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a monster, sir. <laughs> uh, well, I'll let you guys think about it. I'll just be over here if you need me. Thank you. This really is a nice restaurant. Yeah. I'm glad you accommodate us so well. I'm glad you picked it up. Um, Tom. The therapist recommended that maybe we try something new, and um, I, I hope you don't mind, but I put an ad on Craigslist, yeah, um, you know, male and female seek, I don't know what the words uh, TMF uh, by mean, but I was just it's hoping that letters. maybe it's just mostly letters. I mean, I gave up at, like, well, I, I moved on the picture. Pictures at this point. Okay, just a moment, because I think this is our friend. Okay. And the TMFII picture lady. You know what? <laughs> She's cuter than I imagined. Is this something that you could be into? Can we can we make this a thing? Wait, wait what? What's going on here? Okay, wait. I'm confused. Are you here for the um the the three way? Or are you like here to buy the? Like oh no, I need to clean the house, ma'am. You're here to clean the house. Yes. Oh, yeah, the TMI so Yeah, the TMI, TMF too much food in the house. I don't know. <laughs> I clean the house. You can't even I do clean it. the house. A three-way oh, ride, I'm darling. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to make yeah, that. I'm not getting If you can't house. get some good quality sex off Craigslist, where on earth are we going to be able to I find somebody to come know. into the house? Oh, you put oh, it in the back door. <laughs> 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 I saw it into the back door. Hello. Hello! Hi! 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 TMF by? This means fun and then by? Is that okay, yeah, wait, but again, question. If she's here for the house, hey, well, are you the house? Okay, she's here to clean the house. Are you the house. The lawnmower or the threesome? Well, I feel like I should you explain know. how Craigslist works. I don't know how the internet works. It's not like a registry where things get checked off that it's been done unless you take the post down. Okay, well, so if you're so both you here to clean the house. We whackers for sale, is that what we're here for? Now, did you say Tom. we whackers? Oh, hang on, I've got these oh, zippers open. Goodness. Now I can hear you. Well, uh, well, you're useless and you can't even answer the door. What? Well, it's really nice to meet you. You accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your right. personal savior. Wow. We have a house full of. Uh, you know what? Yeah, no, come on, no, we got a house full of. We got a house full of sex slaves. Well, you guys should take over. You guys should use Craigslist to tell about the Lord and Savior. Can we That figured I'd go through the back window. Most of my sexual intercourse has come through there. Yeah, well, exactly. Isn't that what the 
This is just a big mess. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> and see. <laughs>
problem though. Like now he really wants to get her back, but like every plan he's coming up with is like borderline serial killer plan. You know what I mean? He's like, dude, just listen. I'm gonna wait outside her house until she comes home from work. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. I'm gonna write, I love you in gasoline on her lawn. <laughs> Dude, she's going to take me back, trust me. Like, that sounds great, man. You, you do that. I recently, uh, I recently uh, picked up a chick at a bar this weekend, this past weekend. Pretty interesting. We leave. We leave the bar. She, uh, we hop in a cab and she says, uh, let's stop at cookout before we go back to my place. I'm like, okay. Let's do that. Let's see what this chick orders verbatim. She goes, can I have a quesadilla? And for my side, can I have another quesadilla? <laughs> and can I get some hush puppies and a Reese's Pieces milkshake? I was like, I would like this chick's style. All right, go back to her place. This is how she eats this thing, okay? She takes one quesadilla, wraps it around the other one, and then strategically puts hush puppies as if to get one in every bite. <laughs> and then she proceeds to face fuck herself with this thing. Just unmercifully sloppy. It's just disgusting. She's like talking to me while she's eating. So yeah, you see that lamp over there? My dad gave me that lamp. I don't talk to him anymore. He's kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> and now, like, she's getting like the meat sweats. You know what I mean? <laughs> So like all like her makeup and her whore warrior paint is now just running down her face. And she had like she had like short hair, so she had like extensions in, and she's like taking them out while eating, so half of them are hanging out, the other half has like queso sauce in them. It's like this girl literally melted in front of me. I wanted to take her back to the bar and pick her up and be like, yeah, this is what I fucking ordered. Um, I don't know if there's a mix-up, you've got a spare in the back, or what's going on here? It gets better, so after she's done devouring this thing, okay, she proceeds to go to the cabinet, and she starts eating all of her roommate's food. I knew it was her roommate's food because this girl's name was Casey, all the bags had Leslie on them, okay? And she's like bitterly eating her food, like, she's just like, yeah, fucking Leslie, she's got a boyfriend, she's a bitch, and just fucking like eating her Cheetos and shit. So she's done with that. She's like, she's like deep breathing and shit because her heart is like starting to like fight its way through. You know, just trying to like keep this bitch alive. She looks at me, she goes, So you want to go to my room now? Watch the movie on? Like, for what? What are you going to eat my dick next? Jesus Christ! Still had sex with her, I mean. <laughs> what do you guys want from me? I'm only human. Come on. Come on. I feel like we established a lot here. I feel like we're all on the same team now. I feel like I can share something very personal with you guys. Um, I have a very racist grandmother. <laughs> yeah, let us sink in, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, come on. Come on. She doesn't like you, so I mean, come on. <laughs> and I hate her right there, man. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. How old are you, buddy? How old are you? 21. 21? She's, she's fucking 80 something. She's gonna die, dude. Don't even worry about it. You're, you're fine. You're fine, man. Let me describe this woman, though, okay? She's like four foot and like 500 pounds. When I was born, she was like five foot and like 200 pounds, but like a nice 200, you know what I mean? And like, she's just expanding this way, just violently expanding, like Germany in the 40s, just fucking brutal. Brutal. It's bad. It's so bad. I remember, uh, Last Christmas, cousin brings home her new boyfriend. Never met the family before. First time meeting the family. First thing out of this racist bitch's mouth, first thing as he walks in the door, she goes, thank God he's not black. I'm like, Grandma, can we tone it down, please? He's going to think he's just walking the fucking Manson Ranch. Okay? Let's just try to get through appetizers before you start, start throwing your true colors out there. She goes, Joe. Looks me right in the eye. She goes, Joe. But you married a black girl. I said, yes, absolutely, I married a black girl. I have no problem with that. She goes, okay, okay. Let me rephrase the question. <laughs> Would you have black kids? I said, I'd absolutely have black kids. Are you out of your fucking mind? Do you know how many scholarships there are out there for black children? <laughs> Financially, you'd be fucking retarded to pass that up if you could. You fucking moron? Jesus Christ. That's why you're in a shitty retirement home, okay? For that fucking strategy. 
my father's not racist, and by that I mean he hides it better, you know? <laughs> Man's racist in the shower when he's alone with his thoughts. It's a lot better than out in public. I love my dad, but like all he does is watch the fucking History Channel. He watches the History Channel like he's cramming for a social studies test. Like, and the show he loves is Ancient Aliens. You guys know that show? Fucking horrible, man. It's all about shit that might have happened in history. Like the guy, this is what he does all the time. He's fucking bad haircut, four dollar suit. He's just like, uh, okay, okay. I have done so much research. I have spent fifty years researching shit. I've seen the pyramids. I have never had sex with anybody in my entire life. Nobody has ever touched my genitalia, and it's all for the price. That when it comes to aliens, I can proudly say. Maybe they exist. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Fuck me, man. This job sounded fun when I was ten. I don't know what the fuck I am doing with my life. <laughs> oh my god. It's rough. It's rough out there. Oh, I know one more, guys. One more. I have this friend. He's uh, he's pretty bad at pickup lines. He's pretty bad. Uh, I walked up to this chick, uh, we're at the bar, and uh, he's talking to her. I guess it didn't go over too well, because she like rolled her eyes on him, like, <clears throat> like something he said. This is what he throws at her. He goes, look, I'm trying my best, okay? That's not what you say to a 25-year-old girl at a bar. That's what you say to your wife for 25 years, just like, look. <laughs> I'm doing my best, okay? I quit the booze. Let me watch a fucking game, please. <laughs> it's bad, man. It's bad. I'm guilty of it, too. I remember the other time, uh, the other time, the other time. Uh, I was at this bar talking to this girl, covering tattoos, really, really pretty. Walked up to her, and I was like, hey, you know, I really like your tattoos. That's what she said. She's like, yeah, you know, like, my body's like a canvas. I was like, really? He used to call me pencil dick in high school. <laughs> what do you say we draw something up? <laughs> I'm joining the Sarah. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, this is going to be the last improv of the night. Uh, performing your uh, monologue is going to be another local comedian. He's going to be going on tour with the uh, Soda City Stand Up crew. Uh, put your hands together for Mr. Joe Cochlin! <laughs> Hello, everybody! Thank you for uh, staying. That's great. You're gonna have to hear this shit anyway, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, the guys that run this thing uh, contacted me and were like, I've been a stand up comedian for about a year and a half now. They're like, dude, we went on the show. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go up there and do some stand up. And they're like, no, no. <laughs> Uh, just, just go up there and tell one of your stupid stories. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be like, fuck you, I'm an artist, but I was like, okay. <laughs> so now I'm here, all right. Uh, this, the, the topic is fall. So what do you think about when you think of fall? I thought of Thanksgiving, maybe because I'm fat, but it happens. And, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, there's a lot of things that go with Thanksgiving. Happiness, you know, pumpkin pie, turkeys. Bringing the family together and fighting to the fucking death. Because that's what happened to me. It was Thanksgiving Day. Me and my brother were tasked with the option of uh, the quest. I don't know. Pick a word. And we had to bring out this chair and reconnect it into my mom's van. It was one of those like middle pilot chairs. And uh, how many cocklins does it take to put one of those chairs in? More than fucking two, that's for sure. In our anger of slamming this thing in, we bent the piece that you're not supposed to, and it just wouldn't fit in. And after like three hours, brother was like, you know what, fuck you, you do it, I'm out. And he walked away. And I was just like, you know what? No, that's not gonna happen. So I chased him up the driveway, he has no idea I'm coming, and I tackle him and slam him to the ground, and I grab his head and I smash him to the ground. And in that moment, I was young and I had just beaten my brother. I was like, I am God on the throne! <laughs> For the second. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. 
he, he was standing up, though. That he was down, I won, there was an explosion, and he was standing. And uh, I was falling backwards, and he caught me by the neck and lifted me up, and he started spitting some fucking Revelations devil talk at me. And then he threw me across the place into a bunch of garden tools. And uh, when I first hit him, and he, he got up, and I was like, oh, I can find my brother, we've done this a thousand times. He threw me into a bunch of garden tools across the garage, and I was like, oh shit, I'm going to die. <laughs> this just got real. So he comes at me, and I think we're fighting to the death. I grabbed a rake and broke it over his head. <laughs> like you do. Uh, he grabbed a hammer and smashed my ankle. We scraped each other up. I threw him into a four-wheeler. He came back with a shovel and stabbed me in the neck. It got bad. All right? And we're fighting actually to the death. We want to kill each other. And what stopped us was my dad walked into the garage and said, Stop it. We're just like, all right, what's going on? You're fucking scary. He's like, it's dinner time, come on in. And he walked in. We walk in to this dinner table. It looks like a lovely little dinner table. And uh, my aunt and uncle are there. My grandparents are there. And we just sit down. We're all bloody as <laughs> shit. No one has any idea what happened. He's, I've got a black eye. He's like hiding a wound. We're just sitting at the dinner table, just eating, not looking at anybody. And I look up, and I see him about to say something to just grind at me. Because I know my brother, he's going to say some, just some evil shit to make me go insane. And I was like, you know what? I'm ready for this. I, I got to come back, cock locked and loaded, and I'm ready to just fire it. So I'm looking down, I look up, I see him about to say something, I look back down, and he says something. I hear his voice. Problem number one, he didn't say anything mean at all. Problem number two, it wasn't Tom. It was my grandpa. <laughs> so this is an actual scenario that happened to me and I'm like my 13th year of life at Thanksgiving. My grandpa said, can you pass the butter? And I said, eat a dick, douchebag! <laughs> Fighters, I want a good, clean fight. <laughs> oh, only garden tools and dinner utensils, all right? I want you to avoid the low blows. Yep. Uh, no, uh, no stabs to the back of the neck, okay? Only to the front. Of course, of course. Do you have any questions about these rules? <laughs> what is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the spork situation? The, good, spork, bad, go, no. the spork is totally legal, you just can't slit throats with it. All right, Are we clear logical, on spork logical, rules? Logical, logical, yes. Alright, how about that uh, three-pronged thing you use in the garden to plant seeds? Any questions on that? Uh, face raking? Face raking is totally I'm legal. I'm going to do some face raking with whatever that thing's called. Yes, I'm going to do that. Spade? Uh, above belt or below? Uh, both. You, you can, the spade's the one weapon you can attack both with. So just go ahead and dig into the crotch. Okay, fighters, simple rules. You're only allowed to use your knitting kits as well as the usual uh, Tupperware containers. Those are only the kitchen, those are only kitchen pies. I'm going to end you. I'm going to end you. She's going to end, what, do you? Still doing silent thing, okay, that's fine. <laughs> it's an intimidation thing, it's I'm all scared. right, it's okay. Uh, clean fight. You may be my sister, <laughs> but I will fuck you up, bitch. You know what, I'm scared of you, I'm scared of you. Okay, I don't want I'm anything scared. to happen like last time. You went into your fridge, got the chicken nuggets out, and just hit her over the head. You can't use frozen meat. I ain't gonna use no frozen meat this time. No okay. chicken tenders. Now I'm gonna... I'm gonna pull that hair right out your head, girl. This is the weed. Try it, bitch. It ain't gonna be that hard. I can see it. It's glued in. Hi. Um, I need to return on this satellite dish. Okay. 
Um, I mean, I, I just sort of wanted all the sports channels, and just about everything on here is people stabbing each other with whatever they can find in their house. <laughs> okay, well, you did uh, get the uh, stabification uh, package, so. Yeah, I thought that made, like it was sort of like a Halloween theme. I thought it was being clever, like marketing. Uh, it really is. Just no, it's just no yeah, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, yeah, just a, a Tupperware drawer, uh, anything that you can find around the house. It's a lot of that. So let me uh, ask you a question: Do you think forty nine ninety five a month is a fair amount? Oh God, no, that's way too much. But <laughs> I, 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 so if I wanted uh, to see as much as go hang out under a bridge. Did you return the Dish Network? Look, I, I tried. I mean, no. I, I put it on the I put it on the thing. I didn't want you to return that. I am obsessed with the Tupperware challenge. Yeah, and that's that's really the problem. I took it back because of like now it seems pretty clear that you are going to stab. Me. I will stab you probably in your dreams because that's where I haunt you. Yeah, I sleep when I sleep now with a sleeping bag all the way to the top. Zipped up, and I sleep with a. F have you noticed the face mask? Well, it's I've, hard I've, to breathe in a face mask when you're sleeping. I thought that's where a therapist cleaned his. Do you know how I shower? I shower like this. Dad, 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 yeah, dad, yeah, dad, yeah, dad, yeah, yes, dad. Hey, hey, hey. There was a show, and it was on the TV the other day, mm -hmm. and I can't get it on the TV. I and took the box. Because, right. because your father took, took the box. Because your mom that's not it. I want to go live with mom. You live with mom. We're here. <laughs> Wait. You're living right here in my house. This is my house. But I saw the papers. Your it house. Said, it said that it said it had a D word written on it. I know. I know. Well, I'm, but I, uh, I want to live with mom. She wants to live with me. I think she it's time to box. All right, gentlemen, as I said, the president is not going to comment on that scenario now. Do we have any further questions? Um, yes. Uh, which scenario are we talking about again? The president says eat a dick, okay? okay? <laughs> we got enough out of the New York Post at this place! <laughs> um, which dick was the president specifically asking us to eat? Yeah. Uh, he was asking you to eat the dick of his dog. Thank you. Okay, uh, was that his dog Mumsy or his dog Pixel? The president says you should go suck a cock in hell! <laughs> Which hell are we talking about? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, this is oh. uh, um, Randall from Fox News. If we suck the dick, will the president finally admit he's part of ISIS? <laughs> <laughs> the president has stated very clearly several times he is not a Muslim, he is not a member of ISIS. Uh, and he wishes you to go uh, choke on a penis pop. So, President <laughs> forcing everyone to gay marry ISIS somebody. Got it. That is how we write the news here. Yes. This is Shannon from C-SPAN. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. That's how are you great. Too? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, now, when you suck the dick, are you going to get Ebola? Yeah, I also need to, that's also part of what I have already. Because we uh, heard that when it's a suck the dick, you get Ebola. Plus, Obama was born in Liberia. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. Guys, guys, thank you. Thank you for fielding a lot of questions for me. Oh, it's here. You're doing a great job. I feel like, we'll let can, you take it I feel like we, can, we can tag team this. Gentlemen. Oh, tag team. Okay. Gentlemen. I would like to apologize for some statements that have been made. And I would like to say that maybe I haven't been as clear as I could possibly be. I would like you to go, hit your dick! Uh, I, I don't know any other way to say it. Uh, is, I, is this like Occupy it. Wall Street, man? Uh, Occupy DC! Down with Ebola! I with think Ebola. I have this one. Uh, can I? She's got a good point. May I adopt the presidential cadence? Adopt a bola. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, some folks are unhappy. Uh, some folks are sick. Doing a good job. Some folks are gonna have to eat a dick, am I right? Oh, you nailed it. Can I ask a question? Well, can you run for a third term? Because if you don't, we have literally nothing else to talk about here at Fox News. <laughs> I'd actually like to uh, throw Pixel's hat in the ring. Uh, she's been a very good pet. I feel like she could lead the country very well. And not only would she be the first female president, she would be the first non-human uh, president. Okay, Obama's dog, gay, ISIS, Ebola. Got it. I'm here. I'm here and everything I do. 
Okay, uh, yep. quick question. Yep. Um, can you use food stamps to buy those dicks that we can eat? Is that something that, uh, is, that is that covered? Yeah. You are a Democrat. I mean, it's uh, part of it. Uh, snap to eat a dick. That's what I say. Snap to eat a dick. We actually hashtag that on the White House Twitter. That's not uh, guys. Oh, hey. You, you de sure. breathed in deeply? Uh, I, you had yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that's how it worked, but sure, I have a question. Uh, what do you say in response to uh, Vladimir Putin, who uh, just recently... <laughs> You know, I was watching the Fox News the other day, and uh, they're talking a lot about this Obama guy. And uh, I, I hear he's got like some some ties to the ISIS, and like he's uh, he's bringing the Ebola in. Yeah, he's got the ISIS. Maybe we should put kids out of school. Like maybe we should homeschool him. We should put we should homeschool him. We should keep him in the cupboard with I'm, the I'm, other you know, the, 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 the perishables. We should, yeah, we should do that. Yeah. yeah, we should get some cans and maybe some, some guns. Maybe some, some guns. guns. We should have some I like, guns. I like, I like the idea of guns. Guns are good. Guns, guns, guns. Okay, yeah. and yeah. then we can shoot up the president. Let's shoot up the president. I That's like that idea. idea. I like that idea. Can you? Um, I'm kind of worried though. Like, uh, yeah. they they were talking about the radio waves, and I'm like, maybe we should build some tinfoil hats. We like, should have some. I'm, I'm you know what? Worried. You we know what? We should have tinfoil siding instead of this aluminum mishmash. This mishmash. I'm not with it too well. You know what? Um, all right. So we have a. Uh, ISIS meeting number 32. It's good to see everyone again. Yeah. Good glad, to see you all both again. Glad we are numbering them. Uh, glad we're using Arabic numerals. <laughs> you are appropriate. So, <laughs> I've been hearing on the wire. Uh, oh, you're watching the wire now. Isn't it so good? <laughs> I, I can see the confusion. Yes, talking about Nicole, the. Uh, that McNulty is one of our masters. I'm talking about like the phone <laughs> wire. I thought it was cool because my name's Omar and everybody loves Omar. Did somebody say the wire? Oh, President Obama! It's so this is exactly what I was here to say. I was going to say Obama is out to get us, and he's bringing rakes and hoes and every sort of lethal weapon our way. We need to bail on the AK-47. Nah, we're just giving you a hard time, Obama. Welcome aboard. Thank you for coming back to this meeting. You're one of us, right? We watch the Fox News. Down with ISIS. Down with the male oppression. Why is this bitch going everywhere? I don't understand. And honestly, guys, I I was fine with you, but ever since Big Soul took office. It's it's been another game, and uh, she's appointed me to uh, to be the ambassador to ISIS, and she says uh, I gotta take it down. I gotta take it down a notch. Okay, so but you are still going to provide so us just a turn down the music for our dance parties kind of thing. I mean, I, I, I've got to say, I'm on the same page as this guy. Your country elected a dog as president in lieu of Hillary Clinton. I thought that was a good move. I thought that was a good move. I thought so too. Uh, that's it's why I, I put my weight right behind Pixel. It certainly fits with our world view of feminism, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are so, very active members on the Gamergate portals. Yes. I, just, I promised Pixel I would say something, and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys at the party. And before you go, uh, I want, I want to, we've been trying to watch The Wire on our cable box, and we get most of these shows about stabbing. Do you <laughs> know <laughs> This has been tomorrow. Quest. Play microphone. I just caught it. Theater.